Hello and welcome to my world. I'm of course Fred Kaz, and as you know, seven nights a week I stream live over on Twitch playing a variety of video games. The link to my Twitch channel can be found in the description below. Um, a little detail about me that most people don't know is that from time to time I do enjoy the occasional audiobook. First time I ever heard an audiobook was uh, that I can vividly recall was technically a read-along involving a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic book that came with a cassette tape. So it was like, uh, okay, you're listening and reading along with the, uh, with the tape. So it was like, it technically that was an audiobook. Uh, but probably in terms of something more official and concrete was probably in 1994 on a trip to Maine with my pops. And the first audiobook I fully listened to, that, you know, that most people can, can still get these days, was Star Trek Best Destiny, read by James Doohan. But the, and I always thought it was cool in terms of, okay, here's a novel. If you don't really have the time to sit down and actually read the book outright, you can have the, uh, this listen to the book being read to you. You still get the, almost the exact same enjo enjoyment, particularly if the book is unabridged. Because abridged uh, audiobooks are definitely uh, a little bit dis can be a little bit disjointed at times, depending on what it is and how familiar you are with the story to be able to fill in notable gaps. Uh, with that said, that particular issue in detail does not exist with the Ghostbusters Omnibus uh, uh, audiobook collection that came out on August 11th, 2020, basically earlier this week at the time of this recording. I am a big ghost head, as most people do know. I still have my uh, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man stuffed toy from way back in the 1980s uh, here in my office space. Uh, so when I found out that there was going to be an audiobook uh, collection released, of, of, which uh, gives uh, brings to life the novelizations for Ghostbusters 1 and 2, I made damn sure to pre-order it to get it day one and to listen to it uh, almost right away. I say almost right away because of the combined length of both audiobooks is about eight hours. Four hours for Ghost. It's actually more like uh, four hours for Ghostbusters 1 and three hours, 50 minutes for Ghostbusters 2. Taking into account uh, falling asleep during it, because typically I would listen to these things at night. And, and, and then going back and trying to make sure if I heard certain details correctly, it certainly turned into a much longer experience and so forth. Um, now, I am very familiar with Go both Ghostbusters 1 and 2. I've watched those movies countless times. And so... It uh, definitely pleased me as I was listening to the uh, to the audiobooks that they that unlike other audiobooks based on novels based on movies there's there's a rap a funny little rabbit hole um, all the details from the movies uh, from what we see in the final films that that we all are familiar with at this point are were very much present in the audiobooks, which greatly impressed me um, in terms of listening to some other audiobooks based on novels that were based on movies. There typically ends up being things cut out of or missing or just uh, straight up uh, just having different uh, details and, and totally changing the context of a scene. Big example of this is, of course, the novel, the audiobook, uh, and the novel for Star Trek Generations, being quite different in several ways from what is seen in the actual movie. So, uh, here's some examples here of what I mean. Um, take for count the montage scene from Ghostbusters One, and and uh, when after. The boys uh, catch Slimer at the Cedric Hotel. It kicks into the big montage of everything. 
for the Larry King cameo and everything involving various reporters and things of, of the nature, the Ghostbusters running down the street and, and so forth. You all know that scene and you hear these voiceovers, Casey Kasem, and, and telling about the boys having a uh, an, a case at the uh, Club the Rose um, and dancing the night away with some of the ladies who witnessed the disturbance and so forth. That basically, the entire sequence is present in the audiobook. Some things are a little bit different, but the fact that it's there and in almost line for line in terms of everything that is read or or that we hear and see in the movie is actually in the audiobook for me was a great little touch. And as someone who's actually uh, seen the, uh, the scripts for Ghostbusters 1 and 2 and knowing that a number of things were cut out and deleted scenes as seen on the DVDs and, and things of that nature, those things are present in these audiobooks, which is really cool. I think anyone who is a ghost head knows that a lot of that there were scenes definitely shot for Ghostbusters 1 involving two bums that were going to be played by Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. Actually, they were played by both characters or both actors. They were shot, filmed, and eventually cut from the final product. And those scenes and everything associated with them are present in the audiobook. Uh, Winston Zedmore gets more quote unquote screen time, or would this be audio time, with um, how he comes across the initial ad for a place uh, and, and, and more of a. He just has more to do context of the story when his character comes uh, is introduced and it's definitely you get more of the detail that the Ghostbusters are definitely overworked and swamped and everything of that nature because in the movie we, it's coming off of that first montage in the book in the audiobook is it, it's there is a little there is more meat and substance there uh, so it's, it's definitely a, a strong treat to listen to. And as a ghost head, to all my other fellow ghost heads, if you're wondering if you should give the audiobooks a listen, I, I highly recommend it. Um, in terms of how it's the performance of the reader, where in this case is a gentleman named Jolly, Johnny Heller, who apparently is one of the more sought-out uh, talents as it relates to the world of audiobook reading. and. Uh, as commercial voiceovers, he does a he does a solid job. I th think he does not quite have the uh, range to to present um, much difference in the terms of which character is speaking at any given time. He is certainly better than at doing audiobooks than Zachary Quintero, because good lord, to this day. Quintero's reading of the novel based on the Star Trek film reboot for the JJ verse, it, it, it's still right up, uh, right up there with being straight out atrocious. So hey, Johnny Heller's performance is definitely better than Quintero's. Um, but but Heller definitely gives uh, puts strong emphasis on the major details and. And in, in terms of if dialogue is being uh, intense, joking, sarcastic, and so forth, Heller does give a, a nice uh, range there in terms of emotions and, and at least conveying what the characters are probably feeling at that in time. He, he just doesn't have the end way to... There are times that was like, okay, Egon, Ray, and Peter almost sound exactly alike with not much of a difference between them. But then there are other times where there is a strong difference between them. And and so it's either a take it or leave it there with Heather's performance, in my opinion. Anyway, I'm going to leave a link to where you can get the uh, get the Ghostbusters uh audiobook omnibus collection through amazon in the description below if you purchase it using that link i get a little something, something too so so a bit of an ad placement there 
Uh, so with that said, my friends, and you are my friends, that would do it for this week's commentary. Till next week, tighten your friendship bracelets, watch your hang down, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.